The drag force is a force that acts against the motion when you're going very fast inside a fluid. For example, if you're driving a car, then drag force is gonna slow down your car. That's why you need engines to provide you thrust so you can move forward with a force that acts against the drag. Now we're gonna ask the drivers of New York and see if they know how their cars overcome the drag force. Sir, sir. Are you okay? I'm okay, but I wanted to make sure you understand how your car overcomes the drag force and moves through the air. Idiot. What? what? He just called me an idiot. Well, guess what, folks? He's the idiot because he doesn't know how his car overcomes drag. We're going to check out how drag force actually works. Let's go ahead and check it. Today we're going to be talking about the force of drag. You saw out there in the streets, I was looking for a driver who knew how their car overcomes the drag force. So what actually is the drag force? What equation determines how much drag is acting on an object? Well, we can say the drag force is equal to a few factors. Number one, it's half of your air density or whatever fluid you're in times the square of the velocity the object is moving times the coefficient of drag of the object. So for example, a sphere would have less coefficient of drag than a cube. And finally, the surface area exposed to the fluid. So the greater surface area exposed, the greater your drag force is. Now let's try to make sense of this formula. What does this actually mean? Well, we've got a couple of factors here. Number one, we have the density of the fluid, okay? So for example, the force of drag is going to be proportional to the density of the fluid. So if you're passing through a very low density fluid, for example air, you're going to have a much lower uh, drag force than if you're passing through water, which has a much higher density. Next one, next factor is your velocity. The faster you're going, the greater your drag force. In fact, we can make a graph. We can say that your velocity and your drag force are quadratically related. So the greater your velocity, the greater your drag force. If your velocity is two times great, your drag force is gonna be four times great because of that square factor, because of this quadratic nature. And the final, the third factor is gonna be the drag coefficient. The force, uh, the force of drag is gonna be proportional to the drag coefficient. The higher your drag coefficient, the more surface area exposed, the greater your drag force. And of course, that brings us to the last factor, which is the surface area exposed, okay? If you have a nose cone like this, which slices through the air, that's gonna have a much less lower drag force than something blunted, some blunted face like this. This has a much greater surface area exposed to the fluid than this, which has a point, okay? So your drag force is going to be proportional to the surface area exposed. These are the four factors that determine the drag force acting on an object. Now let's go ahead and visualize what the drag force looks like for three different objects. Okay, we've got a cube, we've got a cylinder, and we've got a sphere. Each of these three objects have three different coefficients of drag. Your sphere is gonna have the lowest coefficient of drag. It's gonna have a coefficient of 0 0.5. Okay, that means it's gonna have a less force of drag acting on it than the other two objects. The second object we have here is a cylinder. A cylinder, a short cylinder, has a coefficient of drag of 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And our final object is a cube. This little candle box here, a cube, has the greatest coefficient of drag. As you can see, it has the most surface area exposed to the medium. So its coefficient is gonna be one. Now we're gonna see how these three objects move when exposed to the drag force. Let's go ahead, check it out. Three, two, one. Wow. Our next object is a cube. Wow. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, action! Powerful! Whoa. 